How are you doing? Six Stringers, welcome to the Rock and Roll Diet. I am Mike Michael, your music coach and host. I'm here to help you tap into your creative side, the right side of your brain. I call it right brain rock and roll. I'm also here to help you demystify all those traditional music concepts from Western music that might be overwhelming or intimidating, and we'll put it in a modern rock and roll language. Um, I thought for video number two, video one is my mission and creed about what the rock and roll diet guitar and music method is. Video two, we're just gonna get straight to it. I thought for video two it'd be cool. Like, So as a music coach, probably the top three questions I get is, Mike, how do I improve my strumming? Because I'm locked into these sort of basic strumming patterns that we all learn um, when we learn our pop songs and our rock songs. So, um, I've been fortunate enough to play with so many good drummers, it's ridiculous, and they just kicked my butt and made me a better rhythm player. And then that kind of gave me the idea, it's like, what if I treat the neck of my guitar as a drum? So we have three big strings and three thin strings. Duh, right? So with your E, A, D strings, we're gonna treat that as the kick drum. The kick drum is the drum on the floor that drummers use in their drum set. The three high strings we're gonna treat as the snare drum, which is the crack or the crackle when you hear a rock song or a pop song. So. Back in the day, back in the day in New Orleans, um, drum lines develop what we call backbeat. And basically if you take a unit of measurement of one bar, which has four beats in it, the accent ended up being on beats two and four. The snare drum was on beats two and four. And then the kick drum would play around with beats one and three. So in jazz music, there's such a, an amazing sense of swing that the backbeats were obviously there but there's so much improvisation and fluctuation. But in the 1950s, that backbeat became straight, straight up, and it became super danceable and accessible, and so, and it was super fast. So all of a sudden in the 50s, the backbeat became the thing to help people move and groove, um, and it's continued to this day. So the basic backbeat, again, is when your snare um, is on beats two and four, so I'm gonna treat, again, my big strings as the kick drum, the poof, um, and then just I'm live Ableton right now, um, and then the snare drum is going to be your thin string. So simple pattern: kick, snare, kick, snare. I'm just covering the strings to mute. We will rock you. So again, my tip to you is start listening to the drum beats of your favorite artists. Slow it down on YouTube, our best buddy. You can go to playback speed, and when you slow down, let's say shave off 25% speed, you really start hearing the patterns. And I bet you all have good ears, and you can kind of copy those patterns. So what I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna start improvising and playing around with beats one and three on my kick drum, but keep two and four consistent on the snare. So how about kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. So now, all right, I'm just making white noise on my guitar, just muted noise. What if I put a chord to it? So I'm gonna put a bar chord to it. So all of a sudden, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. You notice I'm pushing that kick drum a little bit. Now I'm gonna get complicated and I'm gonna add what's called a triplet on the kick drum. Kick, 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 snare. Um, I'm gonna improvise a little bit. I'm gonna add what we call 16th notes. One and a two, three and a four. I'm just going around the rhythmic dial here. Switch chords. You can use this method to juggle, it's infinite, rhythm, rhythm's infinite. You can juggle all these rhythms and make your kick really busy and your snare consistent. And then go back, find your favorite rock beats. Um, I love listening to 60s funk music, 70s funk music. Um, you know, old school hip hop, modern hip hop was all, you know, a lot of jazz samples and a lot of rock samples. So 
I love doing that. And through that experience, I've never been bored just being a rhythm player. And just by switching your conscious mind to thinking like a drummer and being a drummer on your guitar, you will become a drummer and more rhythmically interesting. And you will develop your own little unique patterns. Um, that's a little short little snippet for today, how to be a drummer on the guitar and develop your own unique drum patterns on guitar via your big strings, your kick drum, and your thin strings, your snare drum. If you like what you hear and see, more about what you hear, I'm working on that. Um, in, you know, I don't want to be the, the kind of, hey guys, YouTuber, I'm not that, no offense to those people. I am a extrovert introvert. Um, and I think this, I want this to be a really uh, personal, personalized YouTube station where we are a team and we're developing our music together and supporting each other. It's very important to me that you, that you excel in this and that it's clean and simple and fun. So one way you could support me if you like what you hear, if you like my concepts in the rock and roll diet, is I have a little tip jar on Venmo and PayPal. Also, I'm into trading contacts, so I tour. So I do house concerts as a solo performer. I do duets. I have my band, The Orange Goodness, that's pretty cool. My band, Salty, that's pretty cool. And if you have any contacts in your town, we travel, we travel the States. We love to go overseas. That's how we do it in this modern music world. We're, uh, this is just an exchange of energy. So if you have any contacts, man, I'll keep churning out the videos for you and giving you all I can. And I really appreciate your support, the Rock and Roll Diet, over and out video too.